The simulation facility at the Royal Darwin Hospital opened its doors in 2013. The facility is managed by the Flinders Northern Territory Medical Program on behalf of the Northern Territory Health Department with funding available from Health Workforce Australia. It's used by students of the medical program as well as a wide range of healthcare professionals from the hospital and other healthcare training providers. Simulation has been fantastic to incorporate into our curriculum with first and second year students using simulation for their clinical skills training. So by the time they reach third and fourth year, they're pretty familiar with this mode of learning. They're then immersed in the clinical environment, wards and clinics, where there are lots of tricky scenarios that they don't get to experience very frequently, and that's when simulation becomes invaluable. For example, with an emergency scenario, it's a great chance to get comfortable with the doctor's ABC and practice it multiple times. The students can make mistakes and learn from them in the safety of a simulated environment. So when it actually becomes real life, they can manage the situation calmly, systematically and appropriately. Mr Brown is a 50 year old man that's just a presented the emergency department with some chest pain uh, and so just to approach the patient. Okay. So hello Mr Brown, my name's Janine, I've just come to see you, this is the team. Mr Brown, Mr Brown. He's flat lined. Mr. Brown, he's not breathing. Okay, guys, quick call the code, Sarah. Um, get some help and I'll start some compressions if you've got the airway on. Okay, ready? Okay. Six, seven, eight, two, nine, thirty. Yeah, two breaths. Sarah, can you take over after the two breaths? So give two breaths of oxygen. Okay. And then thirty compressions. So we're going thirty to two. Um, all right. So. Just going through, so he's crashed. Um, there's no danger that I can see. He's definitely not responsive. We've sent the help. Um, help is on its way. Um, his airway is adequate, but he's not breathing. So we continue the breaths and the breaths. Um, cannula, can someone please go and get uh, IV cannula? Totally ready. We need to get some IV access straight away. Um, and that defib, we need the defib straight away. Thanks. Okay, great. We'll stop it there. Using standardised patients is also a key part of simulation. We have a large bank of people from the community that are trained in acting as patients and they're terrific. We get the students and standardised patients to role play all sorts of scenarios from breaking bad news of a cancer diagnosis to depression or adolescent health. Then there is the debriefing. As an educator, you can watch the scenario alongside the student's peers. Plus, with the video recording equipment, the student can go back and they can watch their case afterwards. What did you um, think that you did well? What were you happy with in that scenario? Um, I think, like we as worked out, that he wasn't responsive fairly quickly. Yeah. And it started compression just fairly quickly. Yeah. Was. If you redid that scenario, do you think you'd do differently? Um, I guess I didn't really go through Dr. ABC right from the top. I kind of went straight to compressions and panicked a bit. You, you reacted well and then you had the key things um, started, you went back and reassessed. So that's really important. That's great. Simulation doesn't just take place in the lab or the hospital setting. Teaching and learning in rural and remote environments is a really important part of our program. And we recently ran scenarios at our remote health experience in Catherine. Medicine, nursing, pharmacy and Aboriginal health worker students all came together to run a number of scenarios including an anaphylaxis case. Seeing the mannequin crash and then respond to treatment was really engaging and they found it easy to immerse themselves into the setting. We're going to expand simulation training further into more remote parts of the Northern Territory as the program expands. A lot of the advanced life support training was done in simulations. Um, down at the ONG, we did a lot of the um, complicated kind of pregnancies and delivery type simulations. Yep. Um, you work as a team because in reality that's what happens. Mm -hmm. um, you need to think on your feet. And yeah, so I think the best part of it is that it exposes you to the reality of the situation which you might encounter in the wards. We also have a broad range of equipment from simple task trainers such as an arm to practice IV cannulation to high fidelity mannequins. 
including an obstetrics mannequin, which has been great for interprofessional training. We've run a number of scenarios where we've taken the obstetric mannequin into the emergency department. And with midwives, nurses, consultants and registrars all working together, this has been brilliant for team communication. It's been an excellent way for our students and healthcare professionals to practice their clinical skills and we're very fortunate that we've had access to this facility and we really look forward to using it more and more in the future.